Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is my money diary. And on today's video, we are going to be talking about how to get one month ahead on your bills. So if that interests you, if you're thinking about getting one month ahead um, in the next year, this is the video for you. So just keep on watching. Okay, so we are going to be talking about how to get one month ahead on your bills um, and then eventually, you know, get three to six months ahead on your bills. So this is what I did to get one month ahead on my bills. So I am officially one month ahead um, of my bills. So that's exciting. I'll be starting 2023 off on the right foot of all of my bills paid um, by the first of the month. So that's exciting. Now, this is um, what I did. This is kind of how I approached it. There are probably other ways for you to get one month ahead or, you know, um, other suggestions. This is just mine. So um, yes, take that with a grain of salt when you are watching this video, because this is just this is my my version of how to get one month ahead on bills. So I already wrote it all out, but I'm just going to cover it because um, I don't want to get distracted by all <laughs> the writing that I have on this paper. I just wrote it all out just to make it easier for me so I don't have to sit here and try to write and talk. So the first thing that you want to do when you are planning on getting one month ahead is figuring out your fixed bills or your fixed expenses. Now your fixed expenses are exactly what they sound like. They are fixed. They are your essential expenses that are going to be the same amount every month. So these um, expenses, they don't fluctuate um, necessarily in um, price. They're going to be the same. So some examples are your mortgage, your rent, your phone bill, your car note, your, your utilities. So typically those types of things, they're going to be the same amount every month. They're not really going to fluctuate. And if they do, it's going to be yearly. So like your rent may go up a couple hundred dollars or your phone bill may go up a couple hundred or not a couple hundred <laughs> let's not hope your uh, phone bill goes up a couple hundred but um your phone bill can increase if they're adding like additional services onto your phone bill or if you are um doing like a payment plan on your phone and then you end up paying off your phone then your phone bill might decrease a little bit um, but typically these expenses they tend to stay the same um, every month. So those are your fixed bills and the sun. I don't know what it's doing. I'm sorry for this light, you guys. Um, so those are your fixed expenses. So the fixed amounts, um, that they typically do not change. So for me, I wrote down a couple of my fixed, um, expenses. So I have my phone bill, my Disney pass, I have a storage unit, um, I have life insurance, my car note. So typically those things are the same amount every single month. So after you've figured out that, you're going to write them all down, make a list, and then put the amount next to each um, expense. So that way you know um, how much each expense is. Next, the second step you want to do is you want to figure out all of your variable expenses. Now, your variable expenses are also necessity um, expenses. So things that like you need to, to live, to um, go about your daily life. Like you, you need these things. Um, but they're variable, so you have some wiggle room of... of um, budgeting for these expenses. So some examples will be groceries, you know, eating out, um, gas, <clears throat> excuse me, things like that. So um, obviously you need to eat. If you have a job and you work in the office, you need gas to, you know, get to your job. So these are essential 
um, expenses. But like I said, you have a little more wiggle room. Um, you can adjust your um, budget with these things. Um, one month you can budget $500 for groceries and then the next month you can budget $300. Um, one week you can budget $100 for gas and then the next week you're working at home and you can budget $25 for gas. So um, that's what variable expenses are. They can fluctuate. Um, you can kind of play around with, with those amounts. Um, so <clears throat> you can, typically you want to have your fixed bills and your variable expenses, and then you want to include both of those in your one month ahead fund. Me personally, I'm not worried about my variable expenses right now, so I did not calculate my variable expenses into my um, one month ahead fund. Um, I just wanted to focus on my fixed expenses. So you can either just focus on your fixed expenses first, and then once you get a month ahead on your fixed expenses, then work on your variable expenses and get one month ahead on your variable expenses. Or you can calculate both together and then um, start working to get one month ahead um, on both at the same time. So for me, I only focused on my fixed expenses. Next year, I'll be focusing on um, also getting one month ahead on my variable expenses. It's just something that um, worked better for me. So after that, so after you have wrote out your list for your fixed bills, your variable expenses, you want to add all of those together. So total both of those categories. And then so once you get the amount for both the total amount this is the amount that you want to aim for or save to get one month ahead and then eventually you'll start working on your three to six months ahead so for mine mine is about eleven hundred dollars um, a month um, just for my fixed bills so this does not this total does not include my variable expenses but if you want it to do both like i said you would add the numbers from your fixed bills the numbers um, from your variable expenses, and then you would get your total per month, or you can do it like I did and just focus on one at a time. So um, every month, my fixed bills come out to be around $1,100. And I say around because um, I'm not including the cents. So I either round it up to the nearest dollar, or I round it down to the nearest dollar. So that's why I say approximately 1100 so this is the amount that I was aiming for when I started um, working on getting one month ahead. So now, now after you get this number, you want to assess your budget. And why do you want to do this? Because you want to figure out areas where you can save money to put aside for your one month ahead fund. So, um, so when you assess your budget, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you just want to look for ways that you can save money to add to your one month ahead fund. So that way you're not actually taking money out of your paycheck right away to put towards your one month ahead fund. First, see different areas in your budget that you can tweak um, to figure out ways to um, have extra money to go towards um, your fixed um, bills. So if that's canceling subscriptions, so if you need to cancel your Netflix and then, you know, share Netflix um, account with a friend, you can save money that way. Um, if you have Apple Music, you can, you know, cancel that and then just do Pandora or, you know, go on um, Spotify and listen to your music. Um, if you get like um, those beauty boxes monthly in the mail you can cancel that for a couple months and then the money that you were uh, paying towards that monthly subscription now that's extra money that you can actually put in your one month ahead fund um, some other ways that you can save money in your budget is if you are a a woman who likes to get her nails and her toes done you know maybe for the next couple months, do them at home. So the money that you were spending to do your nails at a salon, you can take the extra money and put it 
in your one month ahead fund. Um, you can also do no spend challenges. So you can pick a month and you can say, you know what, I'm not buying anything that's not in the budget. I'm not buying any clothes. I'm not buying any shoes. I'm not buying any makeup. And then that extra money that you would have actually spent on the clothes or the makeup or the shoes can go towards your one month ahead fund. Um, you can go ahead and say, you know what, I'm not going to be eating out as much in a particular month and then just shop your pantry and start cooking your meals at home. Use food that you already have in your refrigerator and your pantry so that way you're not spending money on fast food or going out to restaurants. That extra money that you could have used to go to a restaurant or to eat at fast food can go towards your one month ahead fund. So um, you just want to make sure also it's very important to stick to your budget when you're trying to get one month ahead because if you're sticking to your budget, you're not spending money outside of your budget. So then more money can go towards your one month ahead fund. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, after you assessed your budget and, you know, you can say, okay, I'm going to do my nails at home or I'm going to cancel this subscription and you figure it out ways within your budget to save money. Now you want to find ways to increase your income. So you found where you can actually save money in your budget, but it may not be that much. So you want to find a way to increase your income. So that may be to pick up a side hustle. It can be uh, picking up overtime shifts at work. You can declutter your house and sell the items that you've decluttered online on like Facebook Marketplace or Mercari. Um, when it's tax refund time, you can use your tax refund to get um, one month ahead. Uh, or you can also, if you, you know, drink water bottles or you have cans uh, like soda cans in your house you can start saving them and then take those cans and bottles to the recycling center and then get a few extra bucks every month and then that money can go towards um, your one month ahead fund so to go towards my one month ahead fund um, I have a side hustle so um, I do a side hustle my side hustle is 13 weeks uh, two times a year, so in the spring and the fall. So I designate a portion of that money to go towards my one month ahead. Um, I also recycle, but my recycle money does not go to me, it goes to my daughter. But um, I'm also picking up overtime shifts at work. So now that we're in a busy season at my work um, and we're short staffed because people are getting sick, they're offering um, overtime or not overtime, but they're offering bonus hours. So if you go into work, then they'll give you, you know, X amount of money extra per hour to work an extra shift. So I have been picking up extra shifts. Um, and then that money is going to my month ahead fund. Okay. So that is, uh, the first one through five steps that I took that you may want to take as well. So I'm just going to flip the page. And then you just wanna make it fun. So saving can be very daunting. It can be very um, boring if you aren't making it fun. And when I say make it fun, um, you want something that's going to motivate you to want to save. So what motivates me in saving my money and keeps me on track as I do savings challenges. So um, savings challenges are exactly what they sound like. They're just little challenges that help you save money. So there's many, 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 many different types of saving challenges out there. There's uh, saving challenges for low income, for high income. There's like mystery savings challenges. There's savings challenges specific to holidays and months and and there's saving challenges for everything anything that you can think of there's probably a savings challenge for it but they're really fun because um like i said it allows you to track your progress and a lot of them um like you get to color in 
um, your savings challenges. Some of them are like games that you can roll a dice and, you know, you can save money like that way, like kind of playing like a board game. So um, I decided to uh, start a one month ahead a fund savings challenge. I'm actually going to show you guys here. If you guys are new to my channel, I do savings challenge stuffing. So if that interests you, go ahead and subscribe if you're not a subscriber because then you could see me um, stuff money in all these envelopes, all these challenges. So this was the first um, savings challenge that I started with to get one month ahead. So this little tracker has different um, amounts in each little circle. You would pick um, an amount that you want to save either weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, however you want to, however quick you want to save your money or however your budget allows you to. You would pick a number you would color it in, you would put it in an envelope, and then you would save um, the money. And then once all of these little icons are filled in, you would have, or I have, $975. So this is just um, an example of a savings challenge that you can do to get one month ahead. Like I said, there's many other um, savings challenges out there, but uh, go ahead and start a savings challenge for your one month ahead fund because it makes it easier, it makes it more fun. And then, like I said, once you see your progress of the tracker filling up, it just it keeps the motivation going. So this is a particular challenge that I did. So I finished the 975 challenge and then I started another challenge to save um a thousand dollars towards my one month ahead fund i'm still working on it but this is another one so this is just for you know smaller incomes you would pick a number so this is broken down bi-weekly so this is um 18 basically 18 um paychecks so the first paycheck, you would save 30, the second, 50, the third, 55. So I only have three more numbers, and then I would have saved um, $1,000 to go towards my month ahead. So um, I suggest you do a savings challenge to help you start your one month ahead fund. After um, you get your savings challenge started, I suggest you open a high yield savings account. So a high yield savings account is just a online savings account that actually pays you interest, interest, interest every month to keep your money in that account. So you leave your money in that account and then, you know, however much is in there, the interest adds onto it. And then it's basically you're making money, having your money stay in that account. So open a high yield savings account. There's um, many out there. The, these are the ones I use. So I use Ally. I use SoFi. I use Capital One. My favorite out of the three is SoFi. Um, I just find it, the money transfers quicker and um, you can have a lot of savings buckets with SoFi, but I have all of these. They all work great. SoFi is my favorite. I actually have a referral code if you're interested in getting a high yield savings account. Go ahead and click the link in my description. Um, if you sign up, I believe you get $30 or $40. I'm not sure because they're constantly doing, <coughs> excuse me, they're constantly doing um, like promos. So, so I suggest um, SoFi. But open up a high yield savings account and then when you uh, reach a specific number, so say you have uh, saved up $100, you made your first $100 um, into your one month ahead, you would take that $100 out and then you would deposit it into the bank and then that $100 is going to grow interest. So every $100, I recommend taking the money out of the envelope putting it in the high yield savings account, putting it in the high saving, high yield savings account, and then it can accrue interest. So then you're just, like I said, you're making more money having your money in the account. So every time you reach a milestone, put that money into your high yield savings account. And then 
the last thing is once you reach your goal so now that i have met my goal for um 9.95 or 9.75 i started a new savings challenge so that way i can work on my three to six month fund um so once you reach your goal you want to repeat so you want to keep um doing savings challenges to eventually get to that six month ahead fund or whatever your ultimate goal is just go ahead and keep repeating the cycle so that way it'll help you get to that um, goal faster so those are kind of the steps that i took that you can take and apply to your situation like i said this is not the end all be all this is just my interpretation of getting one month ahead <clears throat> so i'm just going to run over how i got one month ahead so Again, I calculated all of my bills. I started a savings challenge. So in the beginning of the year, it wasn't a priority to me to get one month ahead. So I just slowed, I saved slowly here and there. I put money in it here and there. And then um, it wasn't until last month that I got um, motivated to get one month ahead before the um, end year, uh, year ended because I wanted to start the year off 2023 off with all my bills paid so that's when I made it a goal to okay I need to get one month ahead before the year ends. so I decided to um, use my inflation check to jump start that um, savings challenge so um, I got the inflation check and I took I believe $400 of it and I put it into my one month ahead fund so instead of putting it into different savings challenges or investing it or spending it i designated that to go into my one month ahead fund and then after that i just went in ahead and i used my bonus checks from work to fully fund my one month ahead so i had a couple bonus checks come in from work so i set that money aside and i fully funded <clears throat> excuse me, I fully funded my one month ahead. So now I have over $1,100 saved for my one month ahead. So technically I'm about um, one and a half months ahead, okay? So now um, next year, I'll be working on getting three to six months ahead. And then um, I'm going to continue to just pick up extra shifts at work while they're having this bonus pay and that extra money is going to go into that fund and then um december is a magic month for me so that extra check is is also going to go towards my three to six month fund now and then um next year i'm going to start working on my variable spending one month ahead so i'm going to calculate all of my um variable spending and then Whatever that total amount is, that's what I'm going to aim for to get one month ahead on my variable expending. So that's how you can get one month ahead. That's how I got one month ahead. Um, I do have my new bills binder here. So I will be using um, this to stuff my bills next year. So um, here it is. I'm not going to go through it, but I do have my binder here. <clears throat> And then so my next video, I'm actually going to show you guys me taking the money out of my one month ahead fund and then stuffing it into my bills binder. So if you want to see me stuff my bills binder, please subscribe, please come back um, and look out for that video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this helped some of you or um, gives you a little direction on how to get one month ahead. Um, and I wish you guys all the best of getting one month ahead because it feels amazing to know that my January bills are paid. I mean, they're not paid yet, <laughs> but you know, I have the money for it. I don't have to worry about my bills in January because I have the money now for it. So I'm going to deposit all that money into the bank January 1st, and then I'll be starting to save for February's bills. So go ahead and like this video, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.